G'day everyone, I'm back. Welcome back to True Footy. I have returned from a, uh, a month long travel around Europe and I am absolutely exhausted. So in today's video, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a, a fill in uh, about what I've been up to. For those that are interested, not everyone's gonna be interested in what I've been doing uh, around Europe, uh, but I thought if you are, give you a little little dedicated video. So uh, you'll know that uh, a couple of weeks ago, I released a video saying I'm taking a break and going on a trip. Um, between you and me, that was made you know, about two weeks before that video actually dropped because I worked hard to make videos to release while I was away, to drop in June, um, to try and keep the continuity of the channel going a little bit and as well as you know, spread out the, you know, the sponsorship messaging as well I had to do. So um, did my best to um, accommodate that by making videos way earlier than you ended up watching them. Um, but as of today, I'm back. Um, today is, it's not Monday morning, it's Thursday, but it feels like the first Monday morning back after a month of holidays. So I'm exhausted. So you may remember that in that video, I talked about how I was going to go down to London for about a week or so, and then go on a Kentucky tour. Uh, for those who don't know what Kentucky is, Kentucky is a company that uh, will basically take you around Europe or whatever region you actually select. They're, they're kind of all over the world. Uh, put you in a bus with 50 people you don't know and travel around for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. Some people did two months worth of Kentucky. Then after Kentucky, I did uh, about four days in Lisbon in Portugal and then spent the last 48 hours in Belfast. And now I'm back here in Manchester or Macclesfield um, and it's back to the grind for a couple of weeks. Then I'm going to Croatia, but we'll get to that. So if you've been watching the, the non-footy related uh, content on this channel over the last uh, handful of months and talking about this whole move to England, you may know that uh, the premise of me coming here and not getting a proper job for a little while and just making YouTube videos for the time being was to accommodate my desire to travel through Europe and have a shitload of fun um, as the end of my 20s really, really starts to approach. So that the last three or four weeks where I've been away has kind of been the primary part of the travel um, that I've been doing. So obviously I, I did a month in America and then I did Greece and then I've been in the UK for like three weeks and then uh, went away on this trip. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I got up to. So the first week was in London and uh, the reason I went to London is because I had two festivals to go to, both back to back. Uh, I stayed in a place called Brixton. Um, Brixton is a really interesting part of London. It's kind of like the birthplace, I think, or of the, um, the sort of Afro-Caribbean community within the UK. Um, so very multicultural place and um, quite overstimulating. There's a lot happening in London. And as soon as I got off the train after having spent several weeks here in Macclesfield, which is now my new home, uh, going to London and seeing so much going on uh, was a little bit overwhelming, but got used to it pretty quick. Um, London's still a cool place. But Brixton is where the two festivals were. So as you can imagine, 29-year-old uh, me uh, was a bit sore after 48 hours of, um, of raving. <laughs> and then uh, in the days that ensued, I just edited my YouTube videos uh, to release while I was away. So I was kind of working on holiday, if you can call it working. If you can even call it a holiday at this point, I don't even know what's reality anymore. But yeah, uh, then the following Saturday morning, uh, get the tube to a hotel at 5 a.m. to meet everyone uh, at Kentucky and we set off for our tour. So you literally drive around Europe in a bus, they call it a coach, but it's a bus, and you spend the days in the coach, um, you know, on the Wi-Fi. For me, it was following the footy scores. On the first day, uh, I was following Collingwood versus West Coast on my phone. And, um, you know, sure enough, it was 50 to nothing before uh, I'd even really had time to log into the Wi-Fi. But we drove from London down to Dover, caught the ferry over to France, and then uh, we drove to Amsterdam on the first night. Now, I won't bore you with all the details that happened uh, across this Kentucky. It's a pretty interesting experience. You get essentially shacked up with 50 people that you've just met. Very few people had actually not gone alone. So most people there by themselves, everyone's in the same boat, they don't know each other. Out of 53 people, I was the sixth oldest uh, at 29 years of age. The age limit is 35, uh, but most people are around the 23 age. So if you're considering doing it, um, something to bear in mind, there was only a couple of 18 year olds there uh, which I kind of felt bad for. I don't know if they thought they were gonna meet more people their age, I'm not too sure, um, but I think they had a good time. So yeah, me being one of the oldest, um, pretty soon people started calling me dad, which was great. So much so that by day seven, I realized that 
two of the people I'd been hanging out with the most uh, had not called me Jesse once and they were actually unsure what my real name was. That's how much people were calling me dad. They even called me dad so much that on the last day when we got back to the UK, we stopped at this service station. It was this English family uh, in the distance and I, one of them went, dad, talking to his actual dad and I turned around. They just, they fucked with my head. But yeah, out of 53 people, um, to give you the rough demographics, the average age was probably about 23. I'd say more than half the tour is Australian. Uh, the next biggest group group would have been the Canadians there's probably like 15 of those and then five to ten Americans and then a few South Africans one Kiwi and two English girls so the, I guess the reason people do Kentucky is if you're from a distant place from Europe you go on these Kentuckys because you can see as much of Europe as you can in a short amount of time and it's all organized for you so yeah, got to Amsterdam on the first night, um, had a huge one, as you can imagine. Uh, and the interesting thing about Kentucky is you literally do not sleep. And the reason being is sometimes you'll get to a place really, really sort of late in the afternoon, um, and it might be just before dinner time. Each and every day, you had to get up at 7 a.m. to catch the bus. So even myself, who was relatively measured when it comes to going out, I was still one of the earliest to go to bed. I was going to bed at like 3.30 and waking up at 6.50 every day and there were people still rolling in at 5 a.m. and getting up at 6.50, like, it's crazy. I can only really compare it to being on like one of those shows like Love Island or uh, Big Brother or whatever like environment where you just pack into this like environment with 50 people that you don't know. You're incredibly sleep deprived, you're pissed half the time and because you spend so much time with those strangers, by 48 hours, it feels like you've known them for a very, very long time. But the overall thoughts of the trip, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was tumultuous, there was drama. There's so many interesting interpersonal dynamics happening within the group. And that's probably the advice that I would give to someone if they're thinking about doing Kentucky. Try and avoid the drama. It is inevitable. If you're disagreeing with someone or you have a reason not to like them, just pack it in, suck it up, because you know that immediately after the trip, you're gonna not care at all about it. So that's what I tried to do and um, you know, made some pretty good friends, even though they're all way younger than me and none of them from Perth, interestingly. There was two Tasmanians and no one from Perth other than me. But it was a really good time. Uh, we, to tell you the places we went, we went Amsterdam on the first day, then we drove down through the Rhine Valley in Germany, then up to Munich. Munich was wild. I don't know if anyone's watched Parks and Rec, but there's an episode of Parks and Rec where they all go to Tom's nightclub and he's got this new liquor called Snake Juice and everyone has a few shots, gets fucked up and doesn't remember the night. That was Munich for us. And I won't go into all the sort of details, but we woke up the next day with six less people on the tour than we had 24 hours before. Don't ask me what happened. I went to bed early that night. I was trying to pace myself. But yeah, Munich was a good time. Then I think we did Austria, a couple days in Switzerland, uh, in a place called Interlaken. I'll try and flick up some photos for you because the scenery of these places was unbelievable. I went uh, paragliding in Austria and um, that's literally just being shot off in a, a big balloon. I've got some footage of that. Went to the top of a mountain in Switzerland, um, which was crazy. You get really sunburned at the top of that mountain, which is crazy because the, the sun reflects off the snow. It was the first time I'd really been in that environment as, a, as an adult. Spent an afternoon in Geneva uh, and then we went down through Venice, spent a day in Venice, which was beautiful. Very touristy though. It's kind of different to how I expected it. I really expected to be just like a fly on the wall and experience all this Italian culture, but you sort of walk in and there's like a Starbucks in the middle of the um, of the island and there's an H&M and it's just tourists everywhere, which, you know, it doesn't really take away from it too much, but it was different to what I expected. So it was Austria, then Venice, then a couple days in Switzerland. Then we went down to France uh, through Lyon, spent a night in Lyon. That was the one night where I had one room to myself and that was not a highlight, but God, that bed was great. Then a couple of days in Paris on the way back. And then before you know it, you've spent 11 days uh, seeing eight different countries and you're so sleep deprived. And the interesting thing about it is you build this weird fitness to it. So like by day two, I was completely used to getting up after three hours, packing my bags, which was difficult because I had a lot of stuff, getting on the bus, not sleeping at all on the bus because I just couldn't, and then getting to a new place and then getting on the beers because that's what you did. And you just build this weird tolerance to it but it was so much fun and lots of funny moments. I think that's the, the takeaway from it. So many moments where we just couldn't stop laughing and part of that was because we were so sleep deprived that we were brain dead and saying dumb shit. And uh, it feels knackering while you're doing it, particularly toward the end, but now that I'm a little removed from it, I've had a couple of good nights sleep. I definitely would do it again and I'd recommend it to anyone, particularly if you haven't seen much of Europe. And you know, from what I can gather as well, a lot of people made friends on that trip and then are subsequently going you know, to Norway together as a group. It's pretty random, pretty unique way 
to meet people and something I would definitely recommend. But yep, then I got back and then went to Lisbon for four days, which, uh, which is beautiful. Portugal in general was beautiful, beautiful climate, really, really nice people, very chill vibes. The cost of living is very reasonable. You can get pints for three euros, which I know shouldn't be the primary thing you consider when considering cost of living, but I've been doing a lot of drinking over the last three weeks. So that was the first thing that came to my head. And then Belfast after that uh, for 48 hours as well, which was uh, a lot of fun. I recently found out that I am predominantly Scottish and Irish in my heritage. So seeing Scotland and Ireland is something I wanted to do. And I've seen Belfast now. And then next, eventually I'll get a chance to go to Scotland, particularly the Isle of Skye, because that's where almost entirely my family is from. But yeah, it was a hell of a three weeks. Uh, I had a lot of fun, met some really cool people. Uh, there is a part of me that is really glad to be back and just making YouTube videos again. I know that sounds silly, but I think when you are in an environment where you're just having fun all the time, it is fantastic, but you, you don't want to get too used to it because coming back to reality is hard. Even now, part of me is thinking, you know, what's my life going to be in like in two months when I'm getting a nine to five back at the end of the footy season or whatever, how long, ever, however long I can last financially. But it is good to break it up with some hard work. So that's what I intend to do over the next couple of weeks. Um, get back into a gym routine. I've barely, barely seen the inside of a gym for the last month. It's important to me. I don't want to look like shit. I can't just rely on this mustache, you know. I've got to actually put the work in. But yeah, back for a couple of weeks and then uh, doing a sale Croatia with a friend, Dylan, who you may remember on the channel. Uh, we're doing four days. It's like a Kentucky, but you're on a boat and go around Croatia, which I'm sure will be a huge experience. Um, and then I'm going to Canada in August. So around that, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but I'd like to set it up so I'm not spending so much time away from making videos because A, it's my major source of income and B, I miss it. And for the record, I am still as obsessed with the Eagles as I ever have been. I was trying to follow the results as best I could. I spent the morning, you know, since I've been back watching Adam Simpson press conferences. I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a masochist, I think. I like the pain. But I'm sure I'll do some Eagles content for you guys coming up specifically about, you know, how we're traveling. Um, you can imagine the tone of those videos, how that's going to be. But it's good to be back. I had a great time on Kentucky. here. I had a great time in London, Portugal, Belfast. Looking forward to making some content. Looking forward to watching some football again. And I can safely say as well, you know, the, the purpose of me coming over here to, to accumulate experiences, to meet new people and to have fun and be in a better headspace. I've ticked all those boxes and um, I have some people to thank for that as well. But there you go, guys. Just a little bit of insight into my life. Uh, it'll be a while before I need to do one of these videos again. Um, so I'm hoping you're enjoying it. Um, and if not, that's cool. Don't, unsub don't unsubscribe. Someone unsubscribe because of that reason, but it's going to be 99% football. So just bear with me. But thank you for watching, guys. Um, if you do me a favor and check out the sponsors, okay? You know, you don't actually have to, but they've been very patient with me going off for, you know, four weeks and, um, you know, not uploading a single piece of content related to their brand. So uh, if you need manscaping equipment, uh, which, you know, I recommend, I genuinely manscape myself, 20% off and free shipping with the code TRIPFOOTY20. And then get around Game Day Squad as well, because that is free to play and it is good fun. You don't have to spend anything, um, but they want me to drive traffic to the website and uh, I genuinely play it all the time. Anyway, guys. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video, which I promise will be about football. Cheers.